This is how a working mill operated back in 1805. Working in a mill like this gives you a greater appreciation for, as I refer to them, the old boys, um, to come up with the concept and um, actually implement it. The Taylor Sawmill is an historic site in Derry, located at Ballard State Forest. Named for the man who reassembled this mill back in 1940, Ernest Ballard. He was looking for a mill site. Um, we know he bought the property and in 1940 started building the mill as you see it. Um, today with the, the historic building. Bob Spurl is the caretaker for this property. He says this up and down saw is what was used back in the early 1800s when Robert Taylor owned the sawmill. There was, um, if I remember correctly, we had five sawmills in Derry, and so they each would have supported their local neighborhood. So a local farmer may have brought some trees down that he wanted for work on his barn or whatever. When Ernest Ballard bought the property, he was determined to rebuild the mill as it was back in 1805, powered completely by water. Up and down saw is type of saw that was used 1700s up to about 1860. He wanted to rebuild it as an up and down sawmill because that's what he remembered as a youth, having one in his neighborhood. As Bob tells it, the up and down saw replaced the old pit saw, which forced two men to saw a log back and forth manually. So it was two people standing on a log and working a saw up and down. And so one person obviously was down in the bottom in the pit. This replaced the poor slub. <laughs> when these guys were building stuff like this, they were figuring for their future generations. One of the best part of Bob's job is to demonstrate how the various shafts, belts, nuts and bolts all come together to cut a piece of timber. This arm is going up and down along with this sash. So the piece that's holding the saw is sliding up and down. You've got that arm going up and down. And it's triggered by this one move that gets the wheel moving. So once the log gets down to the end of the cut, um, we stop it. I have to move a lever or two, and the carriage comes back to the beginning position. We pull the pins, and we manually move it to another position, whatever that is, whatever we're cutting, and go through the process again. So each cut with a 12-foot log and the setting that we have takes about 12 minutes. Certainly not a fast process for a modern day commercial mill, but the Taylor Sawmill is a working piece of history. It doesn't have to be fast, and the wood cut here doesn't just end up as firewood. We have actually a 70 acre forest here. There's 50 on the other side of the road, 20 on the pond side, and we harvest two or three trees a year that we cut for demonstration purposes. Some of that lumber has been used on other projects like kiosks at the parks or at a forest. Um, we've worked occasionally with some of the um, other groups, Boy Scouts, we've done one or two Boy Scout projects, um, a couple of school projects. coming down the road, I see an open, and I was always curious to see what was going on in there. Michael Tuey lives in Salem and has always noticed the mill, but never stopped until now. I was pretty amazed that, uh, you know, even the technology back then that they had and the ingenuity, uh, 
I thought it was great. I really did. But there's more to this state park than the mill. There is a pond that is open for fishing, and there are plenty of walking trails, all open to the public. For Bob, this is a dream job that never gets old. To have a sawmill uh, is one thing, but to have it water-powered is a whole nother. Um, I grew up working on dairy farms while I'm used to big machinery and stuff like that, and it was just uh, fascinating to see that you could take water power and turn it into motion uh, and make a, a fascinating song.